Hello, everyone. Happy Wednesday. It's Wednesday once again, and welcome to another class with Michael Stores and Faber Castell USA. Today's class, look at this super adorable Aloha. Usually I say Aloha Friday, but I'm not from Hawaii, but I look like I'm from Hawaii. I mean, I can pass for that. I'm Filipino. Hello, everyone. My name is Leibella Rolson. If this is your first time attending our class, hello, and it's nice to have you. Uh, it's nice to see some familiar names here. Hello, everybody. Um, thanks for joining us once again. Allow me to be your companion, your, your teacher for today's class. Today's class, we're going to be learning some lettering. And I know that I see a lot of beautiful kids here also joining us. Um, it you think it's a little difficult, but it's really not. We'll be learning a little bit about faux lettering, but instead of using a marker or a pen, we're actually going to be using some watercolor pencils. Now, I know that in the supplies, I do have the Alberdeur watercolor pencils. It is okay. If you do have um, Faber Castell's Gold Faber Aqua, this will work as well, as long as you know something similar to the colors, but of course, it is up to you if you want to use different colors for your word today, that's fine as well. But I do have the list here and I do have all the supplies in here as well. So I am super duper excited. Uh, I hope that you are. If you have any questions, Ms. Krista from Faber Castell USA is here to help um, me today. And also I'll be looking at the chat, um, but if you're ready, I'm super ready. I'm gonna go head over to the overhead camera and we'll get this class started. Okay, so supplies. I do have some force water in here. Now um, I have some water brush. This one is our water brush. So you can also use just a regular watercolor brush like this. So this one is a number two. You can also use number four. Um, anything bigger than that may be a little hard to control the water. You might hold a little too much water in your brush that it may cause some puddles. Um, and then pencil is very important. We're going to start with a sketch first. It's always important to start with that. Some eraser. I have some kneadable eraser here. This is my favorite, kind of like a putty because it's kind of like, whoo, like a squishy thing too. I love using it. But like, as always, you don't have to have all these exact materials that I'm using. Now we have a question here. Maya's asking, what if you don't have watercolor pencils? Now it might be a little different, the technique that we'll be using with the watercolor pencils, if you're going to use a marker, just because uh, the marker that you will be using might um, create some marks already that'll be hard to blend it. But because of these fabulous Alberdeur watercolor pencils here, it doesn't matter. We're not going to have any issues with blending um, because as soon as the water touch it, you will see all the pigments will like blend so beautifully on the paper. It's just, it's going to be fun. Now I have here some watercolor pad. Um, it looks like this one is super big, but this one is from Michaels. It's from Artist Loft. Uh, this one is their larger size. And also I'd like to mention that this one is the artist level number two. So the paper is um, a much better quality paper. It is acid free and this one is cold pressed. I think it's a 300 GSM paper. So that's really, really awesome. All right, and then, but this is the same exact one, but it's just a smaller size. So I'm gonna use my A5 size. And instead of the portrait, I'm going to make it a landscape. So it's a horizontal. We're gonna do it horizontal this way. What is my camera? It's kind of maybe like this. All right, so here we go. Um, wait a second. Now, pencil, eraser, are we ready? Okay, so for us to find the middle, the middle part of our page, sometimes what I do is I like to lightly sketch a cross and, and then in the middle. So I just can see, you know, much easier for me to see where my middle part is. Maybe a little difficult, but even my <laughs> parting of my cross sometimes is a little crooked. So I'm like, I, I am not sure why 
I do that sometimes. But if you have a ruler, if you really want to go be like super, um, super technical here, you can always use a ruler to find your middle. But, you know, let's just find that happy middle, okay? Now for the word aloha. You see the picture, um, it was in script, but actually what it was, is just a faux lettering. So now you can use a, um, you can use, what do you call this? You can use a script style of lettering or, you know, you see those, let me see, a, grab a paper here so you guys can see. Or you can just use a print, you know, so if you're having some trouble with your scripts, then you can definitely make it into a print. But what it is, is was we're going to make a faux lettering or a fake brush lettering. It is just letter O. And then we're just going to connect the letters one by one. See, can we try this one? Let's try that. So if you are used to use uh, writing your letter A this way, you can write it this way. Doesn't matter. Or if you write it this way, I like to write my letters like it's small, but it's just much bigger. Okay. And then for the letter O, we're going to add a little bit of fanciness in here. So we're just going to do a little curve in here. Feels like my L is too big. So we don't want that because we want it to be readable, right? So I'm going to redo that again. We want to make sure that this loop right here is not going to go super big because it's going to look like E. Right, so see the difference of this letter L to this letter L. Okay, and then so I'm going to do that here. So I'm just going to connect it. Now for the letter O. And I'm going to add my connecting line. So make sure that your letter will connect to the connecting line that you created with this last letter. So this one, I just did a regular O, and then I added this tail right here, like that. And for the letter H, you can start with just a simple H like this first, if you'd like. Just extend this line right here because we're going to connect our letter A. And if you want to do the same look or you want to extend this one, you can just add like that. But I'm going to use a pencil later. So this one, I just want to use a marker so you can really see it because sometimes it's hard to see with a pencil. Here we go. So that's my word, aloha. Right? Hi, Marianne. Oh, no, someone's having trouble with the sound. I'm sorry, but I think I'm very loud. <laughs> I'm trying not to be super crazy loud. Okay, so now that I have my middle here, I am going to start writing my letter A. So A-L-O-H-A. -A. I'm going to start with my letter A, and I'm going to try to make it big enough. And also when you're sketching, you want to be just light so that you won't have any trouble erasing your marks later on. Okay. Then I'll add my letter O. Stop there. Then I'll add my tail kind of like this, and my extender line. And I want my L and my H to look very similar. So I'm gonna try and mimic that look. Of course, this letter A will be much smaller than the first letter A. Recreate it. Go. Huh. Okay, then later we're gonna add some pineapples or patterns in here, but that's later on. We're gonna deal with this one first. Now I'm going to try and erase the guidelines that I created earlier. I'm just going to go clean it as much as possible. And then for the middle part, instead of erasing it completely, I, I still need um, some guide. So I am just rolling my kneadable eraser here on my desk. This one. We're going to cover that up with colored pencils anyway. So just enough for me to see. All right. I know now you're even going to have a hard time seeing it. <laughs> but we just have the word aloha in there. 
okay, I want this to be really colorful and really vibrant. So let's talk a little bit, little bit about the Albert Durer watercolor pencils. Now, these are pure watercolor pigments in these pencils. Um, you're going to see the magic happens when the water touches it. I mean, it's already magical when you're blending it and using it just to regular colored pencils. But you're going to see later when I start blending, it's like the colors just pop so much. It's so vibrant. The pigments are just the pigment payoff is just absolutely amazing. All right. These are also light fast because these are artist quality. But even the gold Faber Aqua actually are light fast too. But this one has a superb, you know, excellence and light fast. Um, all right. I'm going to start with the color red. Actually, I'm lying. I'm going to start with a very light pink, which is a pink matter lake. I will also use the rose carmine and then the deep scarlet red. And this is what we're going to use to color um, the letter A. Okay, so I am going to start with my pink, very, very light pink. So I'm going to go, go over my sketch, just simply going over my sketch. And I'm going to stop where my letter L is. So let me just zoom in just a little bit so I can see it much better. Here we go. And then this time, when I said this is going to be like a faux lettering also, because when you're doing brush lettering, that means you'll be using a brush pen as a tool. But how are we going to get that same look of the brush lettering with just colored pencil? Very simple. It means we're going to add some width to our stroke so that we can have that variety of stroke from the thin and the thick line. Now, how are we going to figure out where we're adding the width? You know, how, where we're going to add the thick lines. In brush lettering, we add a thicker line or we have the thicker line when we're every single time we're doing a downstroke or every single time we're writing towards us. So if you need to retrace your, the way you've written this letters, these letters, then it's okay because I do mentally retrace them as well. So here, this would be my downstroke because I wrote towards me here. So I'm just going to add a line inside my letter A, right? Just adding a little bit here. So I'm going very lightly with my pencil, just like that, right? So this time I went up. So this will be very thin. And this time I went down again. So I'm going to add another line outside of this. I'm going to stop there. I'm going to close this one in. All right. Now, the thickness might be too um, different from the thin and the thick. So what we're going to do later is we're going to go look at, look at the letter and see, oh, it's a little too thin for my liking. You might want to add a little bit of width in there or a little bit more thickness. But it's okay. But this time I'm just applying my very, very lightly, my, my light pink. And I'm just adding a little bit here. And I'm going to add a little bit of thickness over here too. Okay, so I'm just going to bring this one in. Same here. Like that. So I'm just adding. We still have... Um, we still have a thin and thick, but it's not going to be too thin and then super thick. We need to balance our strokes as well. This one, okay? Right now, I am going to use my rose carmine, just a little bit darker. And I'm just going to add, instead of having all the, all the colors in one area of the letter, I'm going to focus on the bottom part of my letters. So here, I'm going to look in the middle. I'll stop in the middle, but I'm adding some pigments in here. Okay, so I'm just going to apply it there. Just apply. Now, if you're just using regular colored pencils, this is okay too. That means you're just going to skip the part where we're going to blend everything with water. But you may apply your colored pencils the same way. 
So once you've applied your lightest color, you can then proceed to your middle color, right? So I'm just applying that, making sure I have enough pigments. And then I'm going to use the darkest one that I have here, which is the deep scarlet red. And again, I will focus on the bottom part. Because later we can always change your mind. You know, I think that's one thing that's very important is don't be married to one idea. Um, it means just don't stick to one look. For example, this is the plan that I have exactly in my head. Maybe later on when we start blending the colors, maybe I'll change my mind. And that's okay. I think that's part of your creative process. Is that let, or I'm saying maybe that's part of my creative process, but uh, I would like to advise you to make that part of yours as well, because I think once you allow yourself to really play around and be open to different ideas, I think you'll have more fun with that. All right, so I have all that. We're not going to do anything yet. We'll just leave it like that. Then we'll proceed to our yellow and our orange color. And again, the lightest. So as you notice here, I have very light. I have a medium and a dark color, right? So again, we're going to start with the lightest one, which is my cadmium yellow. So I'm just lightly going over a sketch like this. Okay. Now I'm going to retrace again. Where do I add my thickness in here? This part right here is supposed to be a downstroke because I was writing towards myself. So I'm going to add an extra line outside instead of inside because notice my space in between this tail and this part right here. I don't have enough space or I don't have much space to put in the extra stroke. So I'm doing it on the outside, right? This one, I feel like I have enough space here. So I'm just gonna add here because this one is a downstroke as well. So from the middle of my letter L, I am just gonna bring this one down and add another line. And we're going to meet again or stop again where the middle of the curve, you know, this curving part right here for letter L, we'll just stop in the middle, right? And I'm going to fill in this area. I hope that that pencil mark will not bother me later <laughs> because I can really see my pencil mark. I might have to just go over them again and make them a bit more lighter. This is, might be too late for this part, but oh well. Right, so here, and then I'm not gonna leave it just super thin like this. I'm gonna go over this also and just add just a slight bit of thickness here where our thin stroke will be. Just adding a bit more in there. All right, I think I'm happy with that. Now moving over to the middle part, middle co darker color, which is the cadmium orange. And I'm just, see where I stopped here where the A, I am going to make sure that I do the same thing like that. Here we go. And I'll go here again like that. And then after we apply that middle color, we're going to use the darkest one. We have the dark cadmium orange. Just applying it. Like that. And then there. All right. Now, next one will be the color green. I should have made this really, really orange and then yellow and green here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my cadmium orange, the middle color, and I'm just going to bring this one up here. Just slightly adding because later you're going to see how vibrant these colors are going to be. It's like Whoa, those are very, very vibrant. Because I want this one to be more orange than yellow. 
right? Okay. Then this one will be more yellow and green. Okay. So next, I'm going back to my cadmium yellow here. So I'm just going to apply it, go over my sketch like this. And then here where I created a downstroke, I'm just going to add a line inside because I feel like I have space inside. Just added some line, bringing it up here. This one will be thin, but I'm just going to add just a slight bit of thickness as well. And then this one where the tail is, we're going to add, or the loop is, some thickness in here as well. All right. Now for this part right here, I'm going to add some green. I'm going to pick up the leaf green. And I'm going to do that, apply that just in the bottom part. So just going over all the areas where I apply the yellow, just going over that. Do the same thing here, like this. Now using the same leaf green, I'm going to color this part right here, my letter H with the leaf green color. Right, so retracing the way I've written the letter. So here, this one was downstroke. So I'm going to add an extra line here, like that. Close that in, going on top. So this one is thin stroke. This one is down. So that means this has to be thicker. So I'm just going to add an extra stroke beside that. And I'll fill that part in this one as well. This one is going up, so that means it's thin. This one will be thicker because we went down. So just added an extra stroke and now filling it in. All right. Like that. All right, so for the dark, we have emerald green and I have some pine green in here. So I'm just gonna add the middle color first. This would be the emerald green. Right. And then I'll add my darkest one, which is the pine green. I mean, this gradient, this blending right here is already beautiful, but wait till we add some water. And people will ask, why would you use a watercolored pencils if you can just use a watercolor? You know, my answer to that is because I can, you know, <laughs> because I really love the control that I get from the pencils. I can, you know, really have a much, um, a much better stroke if, you know, I, I'm more intentional. I feel like when I'm using a traditional watercolor, I'm more loosely, you know, I'm using that very loosely. But if I'm using a pencil, I feel like I'm really more intentional with every stroke that I create. I hope that I make sense with that. Okay, so now last letter, we have our blues in here. So we have, I'm going to start with the lightest, just going over the letter, nothing special yet. So I'm just going to add some blue, like that. And we're going to add some thickness. I feel like my letter A here is much thinner. I mean, look at this one over here and to this. So I'm going to add my thickness outside instead of the inside, like that. All right, let me see if I can help with the audio because I feel like I have it.
very loudly on my end already. So, um, let's see. Yeah, I don't have the part where it says automatically adjust the microphone volume. We never had this issue before. Sorry if some of you are having trouble. All right, so I'm just going to fill in this part right here. Like that. And this part is going to be thicker. So I'm going to add an extra stroke outside. And we always stay in, you know, we we'll always stop in the middle of that loop. So we stop right there and we're going to follow this loop because we don't want to have a harsh line in there. We always want to have a smooth connection or connecting strokes, I should say. So you want to go over that, stop in the middle, but also follow the natural loop that we created earlier. There. All right, now we're going to add my medium. And I'm going to focus again on just the bottom part. Like this. And this one, I feel like this is my last one. I'm going to just add my thickness, even though this is going up. I'm going to break the rule because why not? Add a little bit of thickness in there. I'm going to follow this natural loop right here too, okay? Okay, and then I'll add my darkest, which is the, I think this one is my favorite, the dark indigo. I really love the dark indigo. If I need a black, I would always just gravitate towards the um, dark indigo color. It's very beautiful. Go. And this time I'm gonna leave a little space in here where light part as well, but I'm just gonna stop here. All right, now let's look at the whole picture in here and see, okay, what can we adjust? Uh, I feel like I can add a little bit more thickness to my letter H in here, but we can always adjust that with a little bit of water, but just in case. And this one I didn't add some width, so I'm just using the very light, lightest color that I have of my green. This is a leaf green, so I'm just adding a little bit here. Okay, I think this is good. All right. Maybe add just a little bit in there too. We can always add more colors later. Okay, all right, I feel like this is good. Now, because of the size of my lettering, I'm going to try first with my water brush. This one is from Faber-Castell. But if we get some puddles in here, then it means like you really need lesser water, okay? So watercolors is all about finding that balance between too much water, not enough water. It's, it's really is a little tricky, but um, it just takes a lot of practice. Now, if you have some paper towel in there, that's a great way to kind of like dab, you know, um, take the excess water from your brush. Uh, I have some rag in here. This is what I use. It's really messy now. It has lots of paints, but here we go. Ooh, here. So I'm just, even though it has water on the inside already, I'm just dipping it, making sure that my brush is moist. Now we're gonna start on top, the lightest shade first, and we're just gonna apply water. Just small portion at a time first, okay? 
just to make sure just so we can you know crack this all right we're blending we're blending don't pull the pigments too much that means don't move around the brush too much it's kind of like tapping you're tapping look at the pigments you're actually now look activating those pigments ones that water touch those like that so you don't want to drag it too much don't drag the pigments too much so you just want to activate the pigments by like tapping it with your brush and be gentle be really light with your pressure and it's the same thing here look at that so i'm just very very lightly applying water in here like that now if you are having um like a pool of water that means you have too much water in your brush so make sure that you don't have so much water in your brush this one i'm having some trouble just slow use the tip of your brush so where the two colors meet we want to make sure we blend those colors well so i'm going to bring up now i'm bringing up the darkest colors see i'm just slowly bringing them up there and i'll do the same thing here just like that ah oh, they're so beautiful it's just a totally different look because earlier it was already pretty look at that when it's like blended that way but it's just a totally different look right then i'll repeat the same process here just kind of like tap just using the tip of the brush going over that i knew that pencil mark is gonna bother me just a little bit because <laughs> i can see that going here also right here now where the l and the letter a meets we want to bring in that red deep scarlet red and just kind of blend it together with the orange oh, that's so pretty just be careful when you're doing the loops it can be a little tricky with a brush so go slow if you must don't feel like you have to be in a hurry all right now i'm dragging all those dark colors going up just enough okay i'm gonna dab some water and i'll repeat it here with my yellow this where the l and the yellow it's connecting i want to make sure that i will not have any sharp lines in there i want to make sure that we have a very smooth gradient blending here so there Oop, i brought in the green too much Here we go. If just so, you feel like you want to add more color, this Albert Durer, you can always pick it up with your water brush like this, and then add more green if you feel like it, like that. So you want to add more pigments, more saturation in there. But you can always pick it up from the pencil itself that's super fun right now i'll proceed to my letter h i want to make sure that i don't bring up too much of that dark so i'm going to concentrate on top first i feel like this will be much easier if you have like bigger letters so you're not overly super careful with um, the blending because it can be a little tricky especially if you're using a much larger water brush so I do hope that you have a fine water brush in there or at least something that has very good flexibility 
because this water brush from Faber Castell, I can just really use the tip of the brush and go really lightly to cover like very small space or area. And then if I want to have a much larger stroke, then I just apply a little bit of pressure in there to cover more space. Oh, that pine and that emerald, look how beautiful when that blended, that's gorgeous. I'm going to clean my brush, just dabbing it right there. Yeah. Cleaning it again in between, then I'll go. Carefully going over that loop. Just like that. And there's just something magical when the pigments like react with the water. And then also when the color starts blending. It's just, that's just so beautiful to me. Look how vibrant this phthalo blue is. That's just beautiful. All right, so now that I have all the light clean it just a little bit and then I'll start blending the dark okay now get a feel of your um, water or just the pressure you're applying maybe you're not using enough pressure um, that you feel like you have to drag the colors down or you don't have enough water in your brush you know many different situations so sometimes i can't just say go super light but you might not have enough water in your brush and everything is just not blending as as well as you want it to be so if you feel like that's the case that means you might want to add you know a little bit more water in there if it's blending so fast then that means you may be using too much water so I feel like this one, I want to fix this blue right here. I feel like my A is a little crooked. So I'm just going to pick up some pigments directly from my pencil. Now you can do this as well. I'll just add. Now that it's a little bit moist, my pencil, you can add more pigments in there. It's just so much fun. Play around with your supplies. And see, oh, I didn't know I can do it like that. And yes, there are rules, but sometimes in art or most of the time, those rules, you can break them and make them your own because you're an artist. So, you know, it really is just everybody's so different. We are all so unique. Now, look, I am just adding more pigments in here directly like my pink is too light I want to add just a little bit more I applied it there directly but I'm still going to pick up a little bit more pigment from the pencil just do it like this there we go ah love it and now how's everyone's project doing good okay good all right so for the cute part of this <laughs> project we're going to add some pineapples in here now pineapples are super easy to make we're just going to make some oval shapes all around so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a pattern with lots of pineapples in here so while you're working on your blending, all I'm doing is I'm just gonna go figure out the spacing of my pineapples. Make sure I have enough going around to make it really cute. Um, if your page is still wet, be careful so you don't smudge it, accidentally smudge it. So just be mindful where your hand goes. And then when you're drawing your pineapples, make sure to play around with their position. Maybe some are tilting left, maybe some are tilting more right. You know, you can also do an upside down pineapple here on the top. 
This is a pattern, a repeating image. So you can make it your own. It's kind of like making a pattern paper, really, or creating your own card. This will be perfect. Now summer, you know, school is almost over for my kids at least. You know, you can make a card for your students at home, for your friends or teachers. So once I have my oval shape, more like an egg head, <laughs> egg shape, really, or an oval too. I, I like to make it a little bit like an egg where it's kind of like slightly smaller on top. I have one here where it's tilting left. And if you notice, I don't make my one whole shape just in one stroke. I go once, you know, very little stroke at a time. So I start with the top first. And I know I want to add a little bit more width at the bottom. Just an egg shape. I kind of just do that using some short strokes and then now I'm going to fill in this area right here that shape add one here now when you're doing your pineapples remember we're going to add their crowns so leave space on top there um, maybe this one will tilt more to the left. Just play around and have fun with their placement. I mean, I'm just doing things here randomly. I'm not, you know, thinking super hard about the placement. I just want to make sure that I have, you know, pineapples here, pineapples there. Maybe here I'll feel this part right here. Where it's upside down too. And maybe here I'll have just a little bit peaking and then it's crown. Maybe this one more. Tilting right, but also just the head. This one will have enough here. Like that. Right. I'm going to leave it right there. Now I'm going to add the crown of the pineapples. So here, like what I said, this one would be upside down. So for the crowns, it's kind of like making like um, humps or letter M's. Um, but I always like to, if I'm doing it technically, I'm going to start very technical with the middle part. But really it's like adding like petals in when you're drawing some flowers. So it's kind of like start with a small area. You can make it all same sizes. You can make, you know, the sides much longer or one in the middle is much longer or one on the side is much longer. Just play around. There we go. Maybe some you'll add four, maybe some you'll add five. your choice you can add three you can add four so i'm just playing around with the numbers of the leaves or the crown <laughs> i always like to call it the crown of the pineapple four i think the five looks great too this one is five this one is four we'll do five here three, four, five, like five mountains, five humps, there, just like that, maybe I'll just do this three, like that, and notice how I'm not trying to be perfect with filling in my space or that shape because I know that we will be using some water to blend these as well. So I know that I can drag those pigments 
to fill in some of that shapes that I might have missed. There we go. Last but not the least, I'm going to make you just three. Right. Okay, so this time, for me to avoid smudging and all that, I'm going to start with everything, all the pineapples on top, just the top part. Mm -hmm. So we're going to add some here. And I'm going to concentrate on just the body of the pineapple first. So I'm just doing all the yellows first so I don't have to clean my brush in between. because I don't really want to contaminate the yellow just yet. We're going to do that when we start blending the crown of our pineapples. Whoa. Adding more here. Just like that. I missed one here. See, now, now that you know how to create those full lettering it's going to be fun to create like different types of style of lettering like what i said if you're having troubles with some you know some scripts then you can always just do prints but now you know how to create some beautiful gradients in there even just using some regular colored pencils you don't have to use um some watercolored pencils but the same application will apply. You start with your lightest, um, and then you go with your medium shade, and then the darkest shade. Here. Start right here. Whoa. All right. Now that all of the yellows, I can now start working with the green part now here you can leave it where it's not touching or they're not blending or you can just make it like fun where the green touches the yellow i think it's like a very loose um type of blending but you can always come back later and add more water and blend where the two colors meet but i like that messy look so i'm just going to not try so hard with the blending of that yellow and the green. Just gonna let them meet there like that. Just like that. Because you don't wanna do that. <laughs> now I'm cleaning my brush. I'm bringing up all those greens again. Go on top. I'm just getting more water. This first, like that. Now, if you're a lefty, you might have your own system. You might want to start from the right to the left. Um, I feel like if I don't want to smudge everything here, I should start here on my left side. Again, you know, we all have like different process. It find the one that works the best for you. Always remember that no matter how many classes, you know, you attend, um, I mean, you, you always should apply your own way and say, okay, you know what, that's not working out for me. How can I um, make it do it my way still? but you know learning from what they've taught you or what you've learned from a class but look oh my goodness it's so cute now for the lines in our pineapple i am just going to use the middle shade of orange here which is the dark cadmium orange is that nope this is would be the darkest one i picked out so the darkest orange and the way I would do my lines for my pineapple, I will make it diagonal lines just like this. And just one and one because I would like to add some cute 
faces in here, some cute kawaii faces. Now, if you're not a fan of kawaii, you can always skip that part. And again, no overthinking for my lines, just drawing some diagonal lines in here. You can go over these lines with some water again if you'd like to have a more subdued or more blended look. Or you can leave it like this to have a more sharp line. Whichever way, that works for me. Ha, ah, it looks so cute. Now you can just add a little bit of um, hearts in here if you like. If you feel like you want to add a little bit more, you can. I'm choosing my middle shade of pink. This is the Rose Carmine. So I'm just going to add some hearts in here. Very small. go like what we did with the pineapples I just want to make sure that they're all spaced out <coughs> here we go just add a little bit more here like I need something here can choose to use the orange or the blue you know it's your choice I like pink personally so I need some pink hearts here there we have it aha uh -huh, it's so cute now if you have a marker there with you a pit artist pen um, I'm gonna use the pit artist pen and super fine tip or the letter s like this oh you smudge a tiny bit I know how that feels oh it's okay that's fine oh okay that's actually really really smart so someone said that they messed up with their pineapple so she added a flower instead perfect is it a hibiscus flower? <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to add my kawaii faces in here because, hello, they're so much cuter. And I am not going to forget the lashes because, like that. This one, I'm just going to add two dots. Let me tell you guys, you are not alone with that smudging part. I am very impatient. And so I always end up with so much, so much smudges. My goodness. Because sometimes I'm too impatient to wait for it to dry. That's why when I'm doing classes like this, I try not to use too much water because I know we have very limited time. Like that. Look at this side eye. <laughs> so cute. Thank you. There. They're just so much cuter. It's just, I don't know. It just feels so different when I'm drawing kawaii faces. It's just now it's so much better for me. But then again, we all have different preferences, you know. And I always just like making happy kawaii faces <laughs> instead of, you know, having something that's like mean faces or anything like that. This one would be my favorite, adding like long, super long lashes like that. There. Oh my goodness. That's what we have. Isn't that super fun? Oh my gosh. But before I leave and before I say goodbye to everybody... I would like to invite everyone next week we have a premium class and this one we're going to be using some gelatos we'll find many different ways how to use our gelatos to color our doodles and 
teaching drawing and doodling takes a bit more time. So I'm super happy to be doing this premium class because it means we're going to have a little bit of extra time where we don't feel so rushed. And of course, um, with premium classes, you also great uh, get some premium um, worksheets to go along with the class. So I do hope that you'll be able to sign up for this class next week, May 25th. And um, I hope to see you there. It's going to be really, really fun. But thank you so much, everybody, for joining us again. Um, I do apologize for everyone that had some issues with their connection and the audio. Um, but it seems like it's not the case for everybody, but thank you for being patient with us. Um, this video will be uploaded on Michael's YouTube channel. Please don't forget to show some love to Faber Castell USA. Make sure to follow us on social media. And of course, show some love to Michael's as well. Thank you for doing all these classes for us. Until next class, stay creative and stay happy, everyone. I'll see you soon again. See you next week. Bye.